Okay, and so in this last lesson before we dive into charts, I want to go through the find, search, replace, substitute, and split functions. These functions are awesome, to put it bluntly. So let's go through and do an example. So uh, let, you know, we're trying to get this sentence to become perfect. So what we've done so far is we have turned this into a normally cased thing using proper. We have deleted some of the exclamation points using left. Uh, we also reviewed how you could do the same thing using right, the right formula. Now we're going to cover, cover the find and search functions. So the find function basically allows you to find the position of a string. It returns the position of a string that will be found in a text. So in this case, we want to fix the issue. We want to fix the misspelled fix. So we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to find where in this block of text this occurs. Now this might seem kind of stupid because you could count it out now, but imagine that you had a much larger cell or a bunch of cells that had issues, you know, like 10 rows of these misspelled things. And you could simply write, you want to type first let's say what, let's tell it what we want to look for. In this case, that is the misspelling of fixed. Then we want to tell the find formula where to look. That is C8 in this case. And then we want to tell it what character to start looking at. So in general, that's just going to be the character one, which just is saying, start looking for the occurrence of this at the first character in the cell. And as a return, we get 10. So what that means is if we counted this, we would find that 10 spaces in is where this misspelling occurs, the misspelling of fixed. Search operates in a similar way. Uh, the search function operates in a similar way, which we'll show you. So the search function basically allows you to find, it, it'll, it helps you find the non-exact match. So with find, you know, if we had, if fixed was capitalized uh, and we had done the same thing and we'd done the same, written the same formula that we did earlier, find would have returned nothing. Search is a lot more flexible where if you want to search through a bunch of cells, a bunch of data, and you're not sure if the data is properly formatted, capitalized, whatever, search is going to be the way to go. So you want to structure your search query very similarly where you tell it what you're searching for. In, the, in our case, it's fixed. You want to tell it the text to search and where to start. Sorry, that should be a one. Ah, I misspelled search. <laughs> there we go. So search is going to return the same thing as find in this case. And so those, that's the difference, find and search. Search is more flexible, find is more rigid, just the, in terms of looking for text and data blocks that will match exactly what you're looking for in terms of uppercase, lowercase, proper spellings, all of that kind of stuff. Now let's say we want to replace, so we now know what, where, what character the misspelling occurs on. Let's say we want to replace it. So, oh, and by the way, if any of you all have questions about, you know, how do I know how to structure these formulas, check out this resource doc. It's a pretty incredible resource. Uh, you can basically see, you know, how every single one of these functions is structured. So you can say replace. So with replace, you're looking what text do you want to find? Where is it? Uh, you know, how long is the string that you want to replace it with? And then what is the new text you want to insert? So, you know, this isn't a lot of a lot of this is memory for me, but for to get started, the this is an incredible resource and I link to it at the start of this section. For the replace thing, so what we want to do, like we said earlier, is we want to say where we're going to look for the text that we're going to replace. We are going to start at character 10. We know from our earlier search that fixed starts the misspelling of fixed. Uh, begins at the 10th character in the cell. The misspelling of fixed is four characters long. So 
the length of the text we're going to replace is four characters long. And we're going to replace it with fixed. Ta-da! Now, if we do the same thing, it's very similar with substitute. Substitute, we're going to tell it where to look. We are going to tell it what to find. In this case, it's going to be fixed. So rather than doing uh, a character search like replace does, with substitute, we can just do a text search. So with replace, we said the you know, we want to look at the 10th character, the character, the text we want to replace is four characters long, and we want to input this. With substitute, we can just say, here is the block of text that we want to find, and here is the block of text that we want to substitute for it. And then also, you add a one at the end, that's just going to say how many times you want to make this substitution. This can be really helpful if you wanted to substitute something that occurred multiple times. For example, if you had, uh, you know, let's say a longer sentence that may have uh, multiple letters in it and you wanted to substitute PH for F, you know, if, if it only happened where that mistake only happened in the couple, let's say the first three times, uh, then you could just write a three here and it would replace the first three occurrences where it found these matches. So hit it and there we go. That is a perfect sentence. So as you can see, we've gone from here to here. The last thing using proper left, we've used proper to capitalize this properly, left to remove unnecessary spacing and exclamation points, find and search to work with the replace function, and substitute to replace fix the proper spelling of fixed. The last thing I want to cover, which is incredibly useful if you've ever done anything like import a CSV file or mess with a, a bunch of exported data is the split function. What the split function does is it allows you to split existing data on any character that you tell it to. For example, you can see that we will, we can tell it, you know, where do we, what data do we want to reference? So in this case, I wrote a little statement that has a mistake in that instead of a space, it's separated by a comma. This is very, very common when importing CSVs, unfortunately. So what we want to do is we want to say split the data. We're just telling it what data to reference when you see the occurrence of a comma. And so we have to pass that comma as a string. Uh, a string is anything between uh, two parentheses. Why do we have to do that? So we have to do that because otherwise, if we just had a comma, I'll sh show you quickly, Google Docs is just going to think that it's going to return a value error because it's just going to take that comma as another, as you can see, it's black, as another parameter, uh, sorry, not as another parameter, as just another way that it expects the formula to be broken up. Now, if we put it as a string, that is telling Google Docs and Google Spreadsheets to look for the occurrence of a comma in this cell, not just accepting comma as a way to break up different data that we're passing it. So now if we hit that, you'll see it splits this sentence or this statement into two separate cells. That's Those are the big formulas. Now that we've gone through most of the useful formulas uh, that you all could use, you should be very well equipped to handle some of the stuff that we're going to be covering for the rest of the lecture. If you have any questions, uh, please leave a comment. I would love to cover other formulas that you all think are interesting, helpful, that maybe you know I didn't get a chance to cover. So as you can see, there are literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of formulas here. So I didn't want to go through all of them. I uh, didn't want to bore you all. But that being said, please leave a comment if there's a formula that you're confused by or that you want me to cover. I'm happy to dive into it. Next, we'll be going into charts and we'll do a quick section on that and then we'll get into more advanced stuff around scripting and uh, Google specific things you can do. Should be fun, stay tuned and enjoy your new formula powers.